Welcome to the Manti Epa Podcast. I'm Kimmy B. And Lenny. And we have a very special guest with us today, one half of the Pouncy Twins, Mr. Mike Pouncy. Welcome to the Man Cave. Uh, thank you guys for having me. No, it's such a pleasure to have you. Actually, I'm just glad I don't have to be here with Lenny alone today. <laughs> I've had enough of Len in 2022, so it's all nice right, to have somebody else on. to join the conversation. He's He got a lot of competition today. She just, she just likes the Why are you Why are you speechless yeah, right yeah. now? <laughs> why are you speechless right I don't now? know, you know. Listen, before we go any further, please remember to like, subscribe, follow, and share. We are absolutely everywhere. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. We're everywhere you can find podcasts at Up TV now. Len, we've had a lot of conversations over like the past, I don't know, 10 episodes about a lot of different things, but it's great to have a guest uh, as accomplished as Mike is with us today, whether it's on the football field, in the business world. I could not be more proud of all the things that you're doing. Um, but I love your story, and I was actually looking at your retirement quote on Instagram before we kicked off today's podcast. And, Len, I think that you would be um, – Oh, Not impressed, but like I think that because I, I don't know that if you've seen it, but one of the no, things Mike talked about was just, you know, where he comes from, which is Lakeland. Right. Yep. And, you know, the path that they took to get here. But he, he specifically mentions that it's hard work and it's not just going to fall in your lap. Like, you're going to have to go out yep. and get it. It's not just going to happen. He's specifically said dream big, but know that it's not just about the dream. It's about the work and the hustle that you're willing to put in to go get that dream once you have it. Um, so, Mike, I think that's a great place to start yeah. in today's episode because that's really what, you know, the Man TF Up podcast is all about. It's about sharing stories about how we got to where we're at and moments where you've had to man the fuck up, yeah. where you've had to just put on your 100%. big boy pants and get it done. So if you can maybe walk the, the listeners and, and the viewers through your story coming from Lakeland and how you and your brother both made it to the most elite level of professional sport. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so the, the journey was amazing. Uh, you know, we started out, uh, went to Lakeland High School, uh, won three state championships there. We came down, beat up on St. Thomas all three times. Oh. You, guys, you guys know that school. Okay, Flexi. <laughs> yeah, over there in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we had a really good football team. Um, I, I just feel like it was so special for our football team because all of us grew up together. You know, we grew up, it wasn't team like how it is now where you can come from anywhere, play for any kind of mm -hmm. high school, no matter where you live at, as long as mm -hmm. you can get to school, you can play for that football team for us. We are all homegrown, mm -hmm. and it meant so much to us to go and play in Lakeland High School because we had, what, four high schools at the time inside of uh, Polk County mm -hmm. or Lakeland at the time that were, like, big mainstay schools that all the athletes went to. Mm -hmm. And so growing up as a kid was like, man, when we go, when we get high school, and we're going to play for Lakeland High School because it meant everything. Like, if you're from Lakeland, you know, on Friday nights, the whole city shuts down at mm -hmm. a certain time. Like, you see people pull, closing their doors, locking stuff up to get to the football game. Yeah, Lakeland's downtown. a little different than Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different vibe. We can't even get people to go see the Dolphins, in, yeah. you know, in Miami. There's unless... a lot of that. We went, um, when my son was playing, we went to South Carolina for a game. Yeah. To a small town in South Carolina, because they were playing for rankings or whatever. And literally, we beat them. And, like, the police had a whole thing to escort us off the field. Mm -hmm. Like, there was nothing going on in this town except this game. Yeah. And, you know, the police were like, you guys need to leave because, yeah. you know, we can't. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what Lakeland was like in a way, but yeah. we didn't need the police. It was more just. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were all local. They it was more local teams, thing, yeah. yeah. So it was a, we would all play each other around, you know, in the same neighborhoods. But anyway, we left there. It was seven of us that left from our high school and went to the University of Florida at the same time. So we went up. To I won't school. hold that against you. Continue. <laughs> yeah, we went all. We all went to high school together to the University of Florida, and we had the most amazing time because not only were we, sometimes when you go out to college, you need friends and family around you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Because you get home, you get homesick. You're so used to being in a routine where your parents are around taking care of you, and uh, it was just felt like it was home for us. We we're an hour and a half away. We got to go up there and play with some of our best friends that we grew mm -hmm. up. With. You know, lifelong with, and uh, but to get to that process was amazing for us. Now we did play on a really good football team in college, and so it gave us the exposure to be guys that were high draft mm -hmm. round picks. You know, and uh, me and my brother both went in the first round, and the rest was history from there. <laughs> me and my twin brother both went three <laughs> picks apart in the. I got a question though. He was though. a better player though, because everybody always asks who's the better player. I say my brother. Yeah. So how'd you end up going first? I mean, you both. Have your, both of your names start with the same letter, so it's not like alphabetical order. You know, he was, it was uh, just a year to draft. It was, point, it was a point year one after. faster yeah. in the. Uh, it was a year 40. later, so he left as a junior, and I stayed all four years. And so, you know, after he made the Pro Bowl his rookie year, they were like, 
man, they got to have the same pedigree. And so, aha, uh-huh. so, so he, he helped actually helped you. you. Yeah, they went to the Super Bowl that year. They they end up losing to the Packers. He he went to the Pro Bowl. I think he was maybe second team All Pro, and uh, you know. But they were like, they're, they literally share the same DNA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, literally, they're identical. But like, when, let's when go get go him. go back to the work that you had to put in, because I, you know, I, I can only reference the, the Wilson brothers, because I've watched them grow up. They, these kids would finish school at 3.30 and be out on the track every day of the week. They'd be up in the morning working out before school. They'd be running doing hurdles after school every day. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just a part of just being an athlete. It's how bad do you really want it? You're going to put in the work. Whatever you put in, you're going to get out of it. And uh, for me and my brother, that was our way of, you know, helping our family get out of poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, we grew up really, really poor, and we felt like, man, if we made it to the NFL, we'd be able to make enough money to help our family get out of where we was at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did. Actually, my brother, as soon as he got drafted, our family was in, like, probably $80,000 worth of debt. He paid off all the debt, and... You know, when I the next year I felt like it was my obligation to come and do something for the family. So, after a few years, we ended up starting them a waste management company, and uh, they do all the trash deliveries in uh, in Polk County. Well, most of them, not all, but they got a lot of contracts over there. And you know, we done what we can for our family. Our family's been good because when we got drafted, you know, we made a lot of money, me and my brother, over the years. And they never asked us for anything. They didn't mm. get their house until that's a we blessing. Were, yeah, Mike. We, we, I was nine years in. My brother was ten years in the NFL before they even asked us to buy him a house. And so we ended up buying him a house in Polk County. My mom, she still works to this day. Mm-hmm. My dad can't because he's, he's handicapped. He lost his leg. And uh, but we just come from a good, you know, homegrown family. Honestly. I think that's, I think, you know, I think we've talked about family and the importance of family on the show before. Yes. Yes. It's, Sorry, uh, that's, that's, a, that's all right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really important. I think, you know, I think family, family gives you that stability to, to, to want to, you know, gives you that guidance. I yeah. think it's very important. So, Mike, when you talk about the fact that your family never asked you to do for them, like, financially, even though both of you, like, you and your twin brother, both first-round draft picks, making a lot of money, signing multiple-year deals, like, that's a blessing. I mean, and I know that you know what I'm talking about because I'm sure there were some locker room conversations that you've heard or, you know, even conversations with friends from college or back in the neighborhood where the minute those guys sign their deals – you know, not just immediate family members, but friends of the family, friends of friends reaching out, hey, I got a business idea for you, or hey, remember when I did this? And, you know, that's a really, that's got to be a really lonely kind of place for a kid who's 21, 22, yeah. you know, just signed a multi million dollar deal. I mean. So for us, you know, our, our family, they have always instilled, a, instilled in us that, you know, we never had much, so we never needed much. Mm-hmm. And so whenever me and my brother, you know, made money, no one ever expected anything because we never needed for it, you know what I'm saying? It was, we were happy just being the family that we had, mm-hmm. being the kids that we were. We never asked for anything, never needed anything. Our biggest thing every year was just going to a family barbecue every Saturday. Like, we look forward to it. Yep. Like, we we go to our fam- our grandma's house inside of the trailer park. We go over there, they'd be cooking, everyone. It was like, it's all we ever needed. And so when we got, when we ended up making a lot of money, our parents felt bad asking us for it because we, they just like, man, if we feel like, if we ask, we're going to fall in that same stigma as the rest of the parents mm-hmm. whose kids make it and make a lot of money. And so it took for us to finally ask them, like, you guys don't want to get a new house? You know? mm-hmm. It's like, we'll start looking. <laughs> 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 they found that house in a week. <laughs> <laughs> so they had been looking. They just didn't want to ask. But that's just our, our mom mm-hmm. and dad are. They don't ask for anything. They don't need for anything. And they raised me and my brothers and our sisters the same way. But that goes back to what you were talking about, though, Len. Like, that family dynamic really is so important, you know, in in kind of curating the trajectory of who you become as an adult, right? Like It builds that, it builds that character, you know. He had character instilled in him by his parents mm-hmm. that, you know, a modest life and mm-hmm. happiness and, you know, the, the bigger things, the more important things were going to Grandma's house mm-hmm. for that you know, traditional barbecue or, you know, those things are the things that a lot of our youth today doesn't get. Yeah. it You know, it's those things that are really more important. You know, everybody's going to have their own different thoughts about money and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. But it's it's those core values that you got from your parents, rich, poor, doesn't matter. It's, you know, it doesn't matter your status mm-hmm. in life. 
but when you're raising kids, they need to have that core value. One hundred percent. That's the that's the that's the thing that I think Mike and his brother got and his sister mm -hmm. from his parents, and and that's why his parents didn't ask. They knew they didn't have to ask. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to. They knew that they raised their kids to take care of their business mm -hmm. and their family. So nobody had to ask. Yeah. So that's that's the difference I think you know between kids who get those values from their family and their their parents and I, I, I love your perspective on it because it's true because our parents didn't have to ask for us to give them money every month we just wanted to mm -hmm. felt like it was obligation ours because that's how they, they they took care of us take care of them yeah I mean my kids I have I have 26 year old boy I have a 16 year old girl and a 15 year old or a 14 year old son so those kids the two youngest are really social media generation yeah. you know but, you know, we go to dinner. We go, we go to a nice dinner. You know, my youngest son will shake the maitre d's hand and say, hey, thanks, it was great, you know. And that's not normal for most kids these days. They're like, you know, but those are the yeah. things that, are, yeah, those are the <laughs> things. Start walking into the wall. You know, like, I mean, you know. just basic manners and, and, and treating people with respect. You know, the, the basics. Social media is just like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to keep. We had this whole conversation last week. It's a gift keep, and a curse. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I mean, I'm 55, so I got a few years on you. But if I had this when I was their age, I don't know where I'd be. I'd be. I'd be on Mars already. <laughs> you know, I'm just yeah. saying. I it, yeah, it, sure. But it, again, it's a different perspective on what kind of tool it is. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and that's the thing. Like, the way that they view it as a tool is different than how people who didn't well, grow up with it as a as a built-in yeah. resource view it yeah because i feel like how we view it now as adults is more like man it gives us different avenues different ways mm -hmm. to, you know it's business it. yeah, i mean you didn't have it like, in high school or even college no, not any of that so it was like more exposure so like even like say for an athlete the guy kid that's coming up you know he mm -hmm. can put it out there and, and grow up in lakeland florida mm -hmm. and somebody in california can see it because he puts it on mm -hmm. social media you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. back in the day so if you look at it from that perspective it's awesome but then also, if you look at it from mm. the perspective that, you know, these kids spend a lot of time on here, you know, and it, they base their lives off social media sometimes, mm -hmm. like whether it's good or bad. They go through something, they put it on there. If they don't, it's, you know what I mean, how it goes. Or, Mike, let's keep it 100. Done. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, the day, the like, day, the no, no, you've had some moments. I mean, let's be clear. Like, you've had some moments on South Beach that have thousand, gone viral. Oh, 1,000. You know what I mean? And I'm sure if you've talked to the OGs, like the same, I mean, you know plenty of these dudes that lived their best years turning up in the clubs, but it was pre-social media. Yes, 1,000. You kind of came out right at that time when the camera phone started to pop and now paparazzi was everywhere. And I can remember a couple of instances oh, yeah. when the Pouncy Brothers made headlines yeah. being at different nightclubs. So with that being said, though, how do you... You know, you've clearly been able to overcome any sort of negative press or stigma because as good as that UF team was. Really good. Really good. Yes. Y'all yo, yo, want some natties. It's OK. Yeah. I get it. But there was also a lot of controversy around those teams you played with Aaron Hernandez. You had your own set of situations. You were very good friends with him. Um, you know, that's all, th there's a lot of things there for you to end up where you're at now. Your career could have taken a very oh, 1, different 1, path. Even even if social media was big when all of us were in college, you know, we had a lot of stuff happen in college that you know was very sensitive to the times now. You mm -hmm. know? And even not say so so much now, but even say five years ago, like when um, like Leo Collins was coming out, mm -hmm. you know, social media kind of destroyed him as being a first round pick mm -hmm. because it was an accusation right before the draft. Mm -hmm. That ended up not being true at all, but still, it was a way that social mm -hmm. media spread like wildfire. Like everyone was talking mm -hmm. about it, and it really, really hurt his draft status. Yep. So that's and I understand that could have easily happened for me and my brother, and we couldn't be sitting here. Today. I wouldn't be mm -hmm. sitting here today if it did, you know. And that, but that I think is what's scary about it. It's like, is that the kid that the weed picture came out of? No, no, no. Because, you know, there was the other one that literally, as he was walking up to get his jersey. Yeah. So that was Tunsil. Tunsil got drafted down here. It was the 
uh, the gas, what was the gas mask or something like that? Was he, it? It was a video from him. But it, it was like, but and it was wasn't, but it Smoking literally, yeah, and it yeah. went vi- like as soon as he as as soon as they announced his name, he's walking on the stage. Somebody hit send on Twitter, like post, and the next thing you know, his entire moment is overshadowed by this ridiculous video of him being a college kid. Yeah. Like if like, let's be clear, ninety percent of you know college students probably. Smoke weed. Happy 420. Yeah, I Happy was saying it. I was yeah. saying it on the air today. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, no, it's true though because I mean, wow, that shouldn't have. A, and it, honestly, it didn't affect him that much because well, because he had already been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something they could do about but it. But the Dolphins ended up getting a guy that they were never going to be able to draft because he did fall picks. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone thought he was going to go way before then. But yep. He's still playing good. He's a great player, and I, I'm glad it didn't affect his career that much because yeah. it was something that was. You know, we's looked at a lot different nowadays. Yeah, like yeah. A Ricky More Williams. Acceptable, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, I mean. How, how it turned, it, yeah, Ricky it, Williams out of the league, you know. Him out of the league for, you know? <laughs> and imagine, like, where he'd be right now. Oh, Just, God. I mean, he'd be so vocal about mental health. Yeah. He'd be so vocal about alternative medicine. You know he'd be taking up for everybody fighting, you know, CTE fights and things like that. So it really, you know, it's a testament to the times. But I, not that I worry. And as you're talking about, you know, we, you know, we're talking about manning the, the fuck up and all of that. And I think about my experience with like, did you play youth football? Yep. Okay. So, you know, Florida. I now. I, yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I would love to, I'm going to have to come out and see you in action because I, I don't, I don't think you're the typical Miami youth football coach. Oh, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. See, I know a lot more of these guys. You know what I mean? I'm the Central Florida coach. I bring, I bring, I bring those. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking like. I mean, because yeah, yeah, because it's mostly you know it's not the guys that have a lot of experience in it, and it's guys you know you know how it is. But it, my son plays, mm-hmm. and so for me, like I, I'm very very much into it because I know how critical it is for kids to learn at this mm-hmm. age how to play the game the right way. Mm-hmm. Like it ain't all about going out there and making the biggest hits, going out there and making the tackle the right way because you want to be able to play this sport a long time, you know, mm-hmm. make money from it. But I was the other day I was going out there and the, we do these drills right as office alignment because now I'm coaching O line. Okay. And uh, I brought these boards out. And so basically the concept of it is that you want to take a good step. So every time you have to step over the board. And so I was walking out and the parents were like, oh, Coach Mike, what are you doing with the boards today? And I was like, oh, uh, if your son doesn't make it in football, I'm going to teach him how to be a builder. <laughs> Listen. It's funny because everyone's not going to make it. Yeah, and they have to facts. understand that because a lot of times when you get at, get out those little league games, they expect their kid to be – Dan Marino at quarterback, uh-huh. the best, Jerry Rice at wide receiver, you know, these these different players. And it's like, man, it's a process. And at the end of the day, if your kid doesn't make it, it doesn't make it doesn't make him a failure. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Man, because football and sports, it, it teaches you different stuff in life. Mm-hmm. Like it gives you those, those like what we're saying, morals or stuff that you mm-hmm. can live your the rest of your life off of. And it makes you teamwork, better, respect, yeah, it makes accountability. You a better human being. It makes you everything. You just learn all these different traits that make you a better person in life. And takes you a long way. So I, I tell people all the time, like, what if your son doesn't make it? I was like, I don't care. <laughs> if he learns the values of being an athlete, working with other people, learn how to work hard, and work for something, mm-hmm. then, it, then I've done my job. So I have, a, I have a question since we're on this little league training mm-hmm. process. How do you feel about, <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, everybody winning, you know, like that whole – I mean, I, I grew up. Participation trophies. Yeah, I grew up. You know, part, participation trophies. I get. You know, no, sort you do not. I, don't don't try to I, play I, right, nice not now. Not a trophy. Let's just say not a trophy. Participation badge would be fine yeah, for that. Or like a you showed up every day for yeah. practice. Yeah, yeah whatever, you know, whatever. a merit badge for showing up and playing. You know, but sorry, your team didn't win. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I I think, I think the fact that kids nowadays don't lose at anything is very detrimental, detrimental yeah. to our so, society. How I feel about it is exactly how you feel about it. Like, we have to teach our kids what it's like <laughs> to not always, be, you know, be, be given something. Because if you don't if you don't succeed in it, then you shouldn't be rewarded for something. Like, you have to learn what it's like to fail sometimes and then understand what it's like to prove that you can succeed yeah. in that same thing. So, like, for me, just to give participation trophies, like, yeah, if you came to practice and all that stuff... Awesome. That's what you're supposed to do, do when you sign up. When you <laughs> signed up, it literally says, be the practice on time, be the games on time, don't forget your mouthpiece and your, and your, and your equipment. So you did what you were expected to do. Yeah, so now what we, like, you, know, you want to pat on the back for it too? Like, no, you are, you got what you did for this whole season, you got better as a football player or, or at your sport. Well, you know what's funny? As Lenny, you mentioned that, and, and you're talking about, you know, learning that life lesson. 
it goes back to when we talk about social media because a lot of our content for the podcast might comes from you know crazy shit we see on Twitter, things that people post, and then the conversations that spin out of that. And the generations coming up, yo, you would be blown if you heard some of these conversations. Like they talk about fair a lot. Like what's fair? That's not fair. Oh, it's got it, and it's like yo. I don't know who didn't tell you this, but life ain't fair, no. people. Like, and but I think it really stems from that. If you don't it learn is. that the nature of competition, the nature of life is that somebody wins and somebody loses. It doesn't mean you're a failure. You just gotta get back up and you gotta go again, right? Like that's what life is all about. But if you never learn that, if you constantly yeah. get awarded and then all of a sudden you get into the real world and now you don't get the job that you put in the application. Well, I submitted an application. Well, bitch, you apply. Yeah, one that doesn't mean you're gonna get the job. So yeah. so, I, so I, like I said before we started uh, rolling the cameras, I've been reading this book. And, it, and, I, and I just feel like if we let kids read this book, it can really change the course of their life. And I'm not promoting the book. I don't know the guy. What's the name of the book? You it's called the, the Magic of Thinking Big. Okay. So basically, reading was reading the book. Like we all know that that one friend inside of our group that's like the successful guy that we look at in our eyes, or a successful mm -hmm. female that we look mm -hmm. in our eyes that makes six figures or whatever. And it's not because that person went to college or is better than us. Or anything else? It's the traits that they have that make mm -hmm. them, you know, successful. Mm -hmm. And so I was reading the book, and it, it was interesting because one part of it was like talking about like how real estate agents and most of them. Or see like a piece of land or a piece of property, and right away be like, oh, you know what? Nah, I'm not gonna try. It's too much to try and sell because it isn't appealing to a person's eye. They don't have the vision. So you hit it right on the head. So that's the part. So you're you're probably you know one of the people <laughs> that this book is advertising because more th what they said is that the real estate agent that picks up the job and sells that property is the person is more like the real estate agent that sells the vision too. Like they do the research on the whole area. Like the school's close to here. Mm -hmm. These shopping centers are close to here. Mm -hmm. And then as they're walking through, they they paint the picture for mm -hmm. them. Oh well, man, I'm, if you if you painted it, you know they give yep. them this vision in their head. So right away, when you give a person a vision, it's more than just them seeing the visual of it right in front of them. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the book is is interesting because it gives you all the traits of being successful, not to become a millionaire, but to be successful mm -hmm. in life. And you guys should read it, check it out. And yeah, but you know they they the, the difference between you know. Success and failure is the person who initiative, succeeded yeah. tried yeah. one more yeah. time. It's initiative. Yeah. Well, it's like you talk you about the Bill Gates. He didn't create Microsoft. His roommate did, right? <laughs> but he's the one that brought it to <laughs> fruition. You know, when you think about Napster, the same thing. It was snatched from somebody else, but you didn't make it happen. I mean, I'm not going, don't steal people's intellectual property <laughs> rights. You will be sued. My point is, though, you know, you can have all the ideas in the world, but if you don't have you don't act on the gusto yeah. to go out and get it, Absolutely. you know, or to do it. And then on the flip side, you can be super brilliant, but if you don't have vision, yeah. sometimes it's very difficult to sell other people on what it is that you want to do, which is why a lot of times you'll see the really smart guy with the very creative person walking into the business meeting together because it takes both of them putting their brains together in order to create. I mean, and you've now grown into that space. Like you went from football and now you're a business person. Do people bring you the ideas or are these things that you wanted to do? Like, cause you have what? You have your supplement company. Yep. You also have multiple alcohol brands. Yeah, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff, um, we wanted to do basically the real estate part of it we wanted to do because man was like you know what after football we need something that's gonna make us income you know keep us going make money for you know what we need to do in life beyond waste management yeah be yeah beyond although waste i mean economy. some pretty wealthy people have come out of it so we don't have any involved we get <laughs> that like, our parents they totally control that we don't we didn't ask them for any of it we don't want any of it because that's our way of just continuing to give them mm -hmm. money because once we stop playing it's like man you ain't giving that money every month mm -hmm. you're like nah nah we're not making that same kind of money yeah you know, give them something mm -hmm. to make them money. At 32, there's to, no yeah. more income coming in. Like, yeah. like no, there's, you a lot, gotta, there's a lot of income. Oh, see, look. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not just right. not 10 million it's, a year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Building wealth, I think, is yeah. very, it's, it's, it's something that's lost on a lot of, you know, these younger players is, is yeah. they, they don't realize that it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes back to values again on, you know, on how you're raised. You know, you... If you're raised that easy come, easy go mentality. But also, like, again, Mike, your situation is just different. Like, I think about the experience of youth football here in South Florida, of the guys that I know that have come out of this market, have gone on to have incredibly illustrious careers. 
I feel like there's a different grind maybe that you guys experienced in Lakeland mm. that was not glitzy and was not the Ferraris and the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces. Like it's very difficult to tell a young kid in South Florida that plays like Optimist yeah. or Pop Warner that they're not going to make it. Why? Because half of their coaches played even if it was for a year. They definitely played at a D1 university, mm. you know, or they got an uncle or a cousin or somebody from around mm -hmm. the way that played. Ha that has played, yeah. right? That that's done it. So they're looking at you like I've I had never seen anything like it until I came here where when an 8-year-old looked at you and said I'm going to the league, they said it with more conviction than an adult no, no. <laughs> graduated, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They were like, "Oh no, I'm getting drafted." And with that being said, they then see the lifestyle that everybody aspires to here. Right, which is very east of 95, it's very Miami Beach, it's very, you know, we know what that is. And that's that's beyond football. That's almost anybody that grows up in South Florida. Yeah. That's what we, so when we talk about our monetary values and what we prioritize, I think it's different. Like, when those kids do make it to the league, their first thing that they do isn't necessarily to start a waste management company for their parents, it's to go out and buy a Rolls. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. that, and, and they do see it now because social media, but down here it's in front of you. That's what I'm so saying. So, like, in Lakeland, you're not going to see a Rolls Royce riding around. You're not going to see all that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see normal stuff all the time. Like, down here, so I, I do get what you're saying because I didn't see any of that until I came down here. Mm -hmm. like, I was, and honestly, I was, when I first came down here, I was driving. I was scared to drive on the hot on 95 because I'm like, why the hell does everyone <laughs> drive so fast? <laughs> in Lakeland, we have I-4. And if you're ever driving on I-4, it's yeah. either completely empty or traffic. Yep. You ain't uh -huh. moving around, swerving yeah. in and out of traffic. Ain't like, I got on 95. I was like, man, I pulled over. I called my agent. I called jo <laughs> Josie. I'm like, Joe, like, I can't drive down here. This is crazy. Like, man, there's cars flying around. He's like, <laughs> he's like you're going to get used to it. Man, the fuck up. <laughs> man, the fuck up. You know? <laughs> and I was still a kid at the time, so I'm like, uh -huh. man, it was crazy, man. Like me thinking back on, it, I was like, man, wow. Like now I drive like the rest of the people down here. I mm -hmm. drive crazy. Yeah. It's, it's contagious. Yeah, yeah. It, I was born me. and raised here, so I, I, I very. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's all you know. You go yeah. to a, you go to a country town, right? Yeah. Riding the speed limit, you're like, hell no. Nah. Like, I'm willing to get that ticket today. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, but. You know the Wilson brothers. Yeah, they grew up here, yeah. and they're not that. Yeah. They're not. They're not that. I need a Ferrari. I need this. I need that. Yeah, they're, and I'm they're, yeah, but they're, they're very modest. The Wilson brothers, and they are modest. But you know, their family grew up. They had money. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's, well, well, they didn't grow up. They didn't I wouldn't poor. say like, they had money. They weren't poor. Yeah, they but they weren't class. wealthy. Yeah, they grew, they yeah, weren't. Class. They, you know, they they again. <laughs> the parents were there. Don't show I think your privilege. That's that's yeah no, and that 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 is incredible. But I also think that. The one thing the Pouncey brothers definitely do well, and I'm talking about you like you're not sitting right next to me. Well, I love it. I love it. Is, I love it. is I lie. she talks about you a lot? Yeah, is I know. that they to hear them. expand to hear them. outside <laughs> outside of their immediate circle, right? And that to me is is having an awareness of opportunity. Oh yeah. And I don't know if college taught you that. I don't know if your parents taught you that. But sometimes you have to be not even sometimes all the time. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. And what I think happens to a lot of guys that are from down here is that there's so many of them in their social circle, mm -hmm. right? That they don't have to step out and be uncomfortable, which means they're not networking. So it, and that and that's helped us out a, a lot, you know, after football because. You know, we grew up on both sides of the fence for our whole life. Mm -hmm. Not in a way where we pick sides or this. Well, my mom is white and our dad's black. Mm -hmm. So we've seen both cultures and we were able to not like a, adapt to them because that's who you we fit are. In. Yeah, it just we just know how to be chameleons for everything because yep. we've always been around it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like how you said, it brings you different opportunities. Like we ended up getting in the LaCour business with the JF Haydens. Mm -hmm. And the guy is a uh, one of our, he's our business partner. He's a former Gator. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know that's why that's why I was doing so well. We're all Gators. We're all Gators. But it, it does Fine. because networking makes that kind of stuff. If you can talk to people, if you can get in front of a camera or get in front of a crowd of people and you know present yourself well, people just like you. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter about if this guy was the first team All Pro, if he was mm -hmm. the second stringer for three Facts. years. It just man, that guy was at the top of his profession, mm -hmm. and he carries himself well. That's why you know like. Most of the guys that are like first team all pro, all that stuff, we don't really see those guys on TV and stuff like that. We see the guy that was like the middle of the pack kind of guy, mm -hmm. but he carried himself the right way. He networked the right way, and, it, and it's worked out for him after football. Now, the other guys, shit, it worked out one while they was playing, so they probably don't need to do this kind of stuff. But for me, I just feel like staying busy keeps you alive. It yeah. keeps you young. Like, it keeps you – not to say, like, I'm, it, I would get in trouble if I had a lot of timeline because I don't live that kind of life anymore. 
But what I'm saying is that more yeah. <laughs> anymore. Nah, because okay. I used to when you're young and you mm-hmm. go out, you hang out Check all the time. Like, the yeah, I'm coaching mm-hmm. I'm coaching Little League football <laughs> at eight thirty at nine o'clock at night most mm-hmm. of the night. So like for me to want to go and go hang out anymore, it's just now like, he's got his own liquor company, so yeah. the party comes to so him. So that's open. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be fun because that's open up in Winwood down in uh it's like five blocks from yeah. Winwood, but it'll be open up this month on the fifteenth. A distillery. Oh, the, tropical well, distillery, yeah, right? Tropical distillery, yep. So are they making everything on site? Yeah, so we were doing it in Coral Gables before. Well, not Coral Gables. I don't think about it. Cape Coral. Okay. So we we mm-hmm. had it over there. We was making it over there. We decided to put the distillery down here. Man, Smart. It's, it's going to do really, really Is well. it going? You still you. got it in Cape Coral also? Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's still in production there because we need to be able to make the stuff still. But now that our pumps are everything in, we'll be open on the 15th of next month. And, and are people going to be able to go in and test, oh, yeah. and taste? Do, so is it going to be like a restaurant night. too? Oh, date night there. We teach you how to make the cocktails. You, nice. It's a whole tour. So Man, we're in so many accounts. Like, we're part of different cruise lines. I'm not going to make all the crazy announcements, but we're on different cruise lines that we've already got approved for. We're in over, like, 2,000 accounts, and it does really well. Like, we're in Publix, Total Wine. Let me just tell you something. The liquor industry is probably one of the best industries on the planet to be in because much like death in Texas, people, oh, people will always drink. drink. And on top of it, like, <laughs> we're like the – so the liqueur, we're first of, it's the first of its kind, like a mango, mango liqueur. Mm-hmm. No I saw that, it, yeah. Or a citrus liqueur. Now we have the espresso coming out. Mm-hmm. And is there also what tequila and whiskey? So the tequila, yeah. So we, those aren't like big but he's time. Done. We have to make them there but he's because he's done with his old life. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't say I was gonna stop drinking. That, <laughs> that, that, that is, he's just, just gonna, gonna go do it at home, home yeah. where he doesn't get in I'm, trouble. I'm just not gonna go out there as much. Go. Gonna, yeah, I'm where he controls there. the cameras. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Leave your phones at the door, please. Yeah, But the Twin Peaks whiskey and stuff because we can't like bring in like Jack Daniels and sell it at our bar down there. So we have everything that we create, we can sell out of our bar, and we can't like import other stuff and yep. we have like deals signed with them and stuff but it's yep. just, if we can make it why not make our profit absolutely and, absolutely. and it's better tasting anyway oh there there oh, you anything go anything with the policy name on it's gonna be good i can promise and there's that florida gatorness coming out right there well he said facts are facts yeah. um no i mean i just think that it's it's incredible when you can take the opportunity that you have and roll it over and i wish that more guys would be willing to and I mean this is for people in general I think we've tried to talk about it on the podcast just about shaking hands like but again it goes back to this and it's scary to think of the next generation because that's people skills you You have to feel comfortable talking to strangers and that's one of the things that I think has helped me be successful like I'm not uncomfortable in any room like it doesn't matter where I am if I'm east of 95 west of 95 it's if it's a black tie gala and I'm hosting if I'm at a barbecue it doesn't little league football game like I'm good anywhere and that's just an immeasurable blessing and you don't realize and I think sometimes reading books can help with that you know when you feel comfortable what what got you to that point though because I know right away at first you weren't as comfortable doing that I know for me I wasn't it wasn't until Mm -hmm. I you know I felt like I got more comfortable talking like about stuff that I was comfortable talking Mm -hmm. about because I know a lot of us when we talk about stuff we're not comfortable about I don't care if you're the best talker in the world like you just Right away, it's just like, oh man, people like, read like right you're through stumbling that. in your head. Like, you feel like, yeah. even though you might not be stumbling in words, mm-hmm. in your mind, you're stumbling over and over trying to think about what to say, if it's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people pick up on that too. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm not a big sports guy. I'm not, Kimmy's the sports person in the, in the room for me. Um, you know, and I follow it a little and I watch it more because Quincy and, and Marco. Um, but there was some rumors that you guys might have been a little bit. Uh, arrogant when you were playing, <laughs> and and I, I'm only bringing this up because I I think a lot of people mistake arrogance for competence, and you know that's that's a because I met you now and mm-hmm. uh, you know you guys were laughing in the first 13 you know, seconds yeah, I could so hear you. <laughs> what, what I could say for that is that if if a person's arrogance in something that they're they're actually doing and not like. So for their career, like I feel like that's more of a confidence thing. Like I feel like if I'm talking good about myself and something that I'm actually doing, like playing football, mm-hmm. then I feel like yeah. Then if you're the best center uh, in the I'm, league, you're the I'm, best center in the league. Oh, yeah, no, if I'm out no. in public and I'm out at a restaurant, and I'm acting like that way, then I'd be like, all right, you know that dude is an asshole. You know, so he shouldn't be like that. But yeah. if you don't have that arrogance about you and what you do. That's part of living, competition. Yeah, it's like man, she they yeah. smell it in that locker room. Mm-hmm. I can promise you. So like when. Most of my times when I was like that, I was doing interviews and I'm pissed off because I'm thinking about the guy we're playing. He might have talked shit the week the day or the week before, mm-hmm. and it just rolls over. You know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. as, you know we're alpha dogs. Yeah, yeah I think that's important. And, and you yeah, know it, the, it it goes to the other the other point you were making about um, 
about being confident when you're speaking yeah. by knowing what you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, it's funny because my friends call me novel at all. For, <laughs> and it's not because I'm a know-it-all type of person. It's because I don't ever open my mouth unless I have the answer. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the way I, I am. Be. And I happen to know a lot of bullshit about a lot of bullshit. You I, know? I don't know. I think some of our podcasts might disagree. Well, that that has to, that's opinion. Yeah. That's opinion. <laughs> and that's a different story. Okay. That's a different Fact. story. But, you know, it's, you know, just from years of experience in business and stuff. I mean, you, I'm sure, have become an expert on reading contracts mm -hmm. since you left college because you've opened a lot of businesses. You deal with that every day. It's something that it's something that you learn. So when you have somebody who's a little younger and you're speaking with them, you can speak clearly on, you know, hey, yeah, if you're going to buy a piece of real estate, you need to use the commercial contract instead of the residential contract. You know, it's those type of things that you become an expert on and you don't even realize it. I also think sometimes, though, people overdo the confidence. Like, arrogance comes from insecurity, I think, in some situations. So I've noticed that when people feel like fish out of water – and it's I've been around. The, I will yes. never forget my 21st birthday. I took some of my friends uh, to the Capitol Grill. Like my birthday was always like a big thing. And not the Capitol Grill is anything spectacular. Mm. Right. 21. But when you're 21 and you've yeah. never eaten at a place like that. So there's we had a private room. There were like 10 of us in there. Um, I'm not going to name drop. But like it was just funny because when I think about where they are now in their lives. Right. That was such the tip of the iceberg, but they were literally on their two-way, this is how old I am, they were on their two-way pages, and they were like, yo, why is there paper on my lemon? Like, because, you know, they had cheesecloth on the lemon to catch the yes, lemon yes. seeds, right? And they were like, I'm not wearing no suit coat, and, like, even my old roommate, I'll never forget it, he now is the, Clint Hurt, I don't know if you know him, but he's the mm -hmm. defensive coordinator for no the name. Seahawks. Yep. Well, no, I'm like, yeah, him I'm going to drop, him I'm going to drop, because that's family. Was he there? Yes, okay. of course he was. He's family, but we went for my 20th birthday, and at the time we were roommates, and he was not coming, and he was like, I'm not going to that shit. And my mother was like, if you don't put on a fucking shirt right now and get in this car and come to dinner, I will never speak to you again. And he, you know, that's like yeah. his mom. Okay. So he came. He ended up having an incredible time. But of course, he's in the bathroom. Some drunk ass white dude thinks he plays for the Giants because he's, you know, Mike's, he's a D lineman for the K. He's mm -hmm. huge. Sends up, uh, ends up sending over a bottle of champagne. But when he tells the story after that, he had never been to a restaurant like that, right? So he didn't want to go just off of straight intimidation. But on the on the outside of it, it was, I'm not going to that shit. I don't want to go to that. It was, it was that kind of, you know, yes. but yeah. there's an insecurity yeah. there. No, there is. One and thousand percent. And it, they, it, it, that is a mechanism whenever you're in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. But like you got to, you know. Yeah. You puff up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. Flex. And I think that that's what people see. You know what I mean? So if you're yeah. the, if you're for a first time with a, doing, you know, a post game and there's a bunch of reporters coming at you and maybe you didn't have the best game. Yes. What do you do? You overcompensate, right? You got to flex a little bit. And so when that happens and that's the first taste people get of you or it's, we all know. And, and, well, yeah. Nope. Well, and Kellen Winslow is a terrible example to use, but the whole, like, I'm a motherfucking, like, I'm a soldier comment, right? Did not age well no. at all. No. But it was one of those moments where it was like, you're passionate, you're in the moment, and that, and somebody asks you a stupid question, and that's the response you give them. But now you live on in infamy because of this one thing that you said, you know? And it's like when you get around Mike now, there's, no, I don't, well, I don't know. I, but don't, I don't get an ounce I expect, of, I don't get an ounce of I arrogance from you professional athletes to be confident and arrogant yeah, because they've earned it. There you they've go. They've earned it. You know, you're what? You're 1% mm -hmm. of 1% mm -hmm. of 1%. Mm -hmm. You've earned it. Yeah. You, you know, flex all you want in that situation. Yeah. I think what you were talking about before is, is you see a lot of people that are very uncomfortable in situations, and they're the loud. Yeah obnoxious people in the room, control, which, yeah. you know, and you, you, they stick out, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you're, if you're seasoned and you, and you research what you do, those people come, they, they come right to the top. Oh, and I'm sure, I'm sure people come and pitch you, oh, hey, I got this, da, 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 da. and you can tell they're just talking out their ass, it's like a salesperson and yeah. a car dealer, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, yeah, buy this. Da, 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 da. Okay, That's tell it. me about this. They don't know. Well, I have to They're ask somebody so else. Hard for sales yeah. right now, like selling cars. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. They they don't know the good car salesman knows everything about that car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
That, Facts. That's that's if you want to do something, I don't care what it is, you have to research it. And I go over this with Nick a lot, my oldest. Old. He's twenty six, mm -hmm. and he's opened a couple businesses, yeah. and he's and I'm like, yeah, I get it. It sounds like a great business. Do all the research first. Yeah, you know, see, think about everything that's involved in doing that business. And he's he's starting to get it. He didn't with his first, you know, and he made a lot of mistakes. And you have to, you have to, yeah. you have to. See, for us, I didn't have to go through that curve because we made a lot of money in chunks, and so we were able to invest with. You know, you, you have people mm -hmm. that help you out and be able to. We had a really, really good, or still do have a really good financial advisor, and he put us on the right path to do a lot of different stuff, like even stuff that we didn't even think about at the age that we should have, mm -hmm. like setting up our kids' college plan mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now, when I see him, with well, my daughter is fourteen, she's going to ninth grade, so my daughter will be in ninth grade this year, and she starts what college? What do you do? Three years in high school? Four. Four years. Four years. But when I look at her college plan, I'm like, wow, like she's made, amassed so much money just for me putting in a little bit at the beginning. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 10 years ago yep. and it's like wow like I look at it and I'm like it's crazy like, and she's gonna get a even, scholarship anyway but whatever yeah you wanna <laughs> surround yourself around people that are gonna make you successful and it's yeah. easy to say that because everyone's had financial advisors that seem thought they were good people mm -hmm. and that, they probably got messed over you know what I'm saying but can we cuss on here yes okay so, fucked over <laughs> get out you can here. cuss yeah. all you yeah, want yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's generational you guys are building generational wealth which is which but is very important yes. you're, you're planting seeds that are gonna grow into trees that that your family's gonna feed off of for the next hundred years. But Len, do you know how many people have never heard the term generational wealth? Yeah. Like seriously, you know, so I didn't. I didn't. You know what I'm I, saying? I didn't and know like, anything about it until shit. So I started making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I didn't hear about it in college. Did I, did I hear you can go and make money and I can make a lot of money? Yeah, but generational wealth, like, I ain't thinking about what it. it. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about it past my past mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. before. Now you think different, you know, because you yeah. hear more. But it's like from a mentorship perspective, right? Like. I only hope that you'll pay some of that forward. And and I brought up the Capitol Grill and I brought up Mike being comfortable in different situations because when those opportunities present themselves, sometimes that insecurity will make you turn and run in the other direction. Oh, yeah. And we've discussed it. I went to a dinner one time. A friend of mine was throwing a black tie boxing event in New York. And he was like, invite anybody you want. So I reached out to a, a few of my homeboys, right, who were at the time playing in the league. And, no, nah, I'm good, whatever. It was in New York at Cipriani's. I get there, and every conversation I had touched on business over a very expensive scotch. But it was like, what do you do? Come with me. Let me introduce you to so-and-so. The Bidwells were there mm. the, that owned, you know, the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. I was there with people who literally own their contracts, right? My friends that I had invited, I'm like, I am was with the owner of your team. You know, and football's a little different. You don't necessarily get the same face time that you get yeah. in baseball or basketball with ownership. But the point was, this was a dinner that could have taken what they were making at the time and made it look like pennies with the relationships that they had the opportunity to make. And to your point before, they love being around these guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's crazy. They'll just invite you to, just to have you there to tell a war story about one of the national championship years in Florida or what it was like to be on a team with so-and-so or what it was like when you went to your first Pro Bowl. Like, I say it all the time. There's no reason why, especially, and I hate to say this, this is not a knock on female athletes because you have opportunities too, but there's no reason why anybody that plays one of the major sports that goes to a D1 university should not graduate college not making six figures. Yeah. And that is based strictly off of the relationships you are exposed to. Yeah. These people will hire you and put you in positions of power just to tell stories. See, I didn't believe that, though, until I actually got in that room. Mm -hmm. Because you have to see it sometimes. Yeah. To believe it. Because I can sit here and tell somebody all the time, hey, man, they're, they just, they're the same nervous you are. You are. Mm -hmm. They're actually more nervous than you are to speak mm -hmm. to you. Yes. But until you actually see it, you're like, okay, now it makes me feel more comfortable actually going in this room and speaking to these people because they're just normal, they're normal mm -hmm. guys hey, hey. or normal women. Everybody like, puts their pants on one leg at a time. 100%. <laughs> so when I finally went in there and experienced I'm just like, man, why am I overthinking this? Like, they're normal people. Yeah. Like, they're human beings too. Like, well, they just have a lot more than we have. You know, this, this goes back to that luck thing too. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's like, oh, you're so lucky. No, I put myself in a place to get lucky. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you want to run with the big dogs, you have to get in the big dog crowd. If you sit over here and go, oh, I wish I was there, you're never going to run with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get in there, you get trampled a little, but those people will respect you for coming to those events 
and seeing your face mm -hmm. and they're going to recognize you. Yeah. Even if you don't talk to the person, they see you a couple different times at a couple different places. You're going to strike yeah. up that conversation. And that might be the guy that says, hey, you know, it's my turn to pay it forward. Let me give you a leg up here. My you experience know? with it is, it, it is that most guys think when they're going to these in these places, in these high profile people are there, that they think that the, the business deal is going to happen right then and there. It doesn't happen there. It's just a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like you meet this person, like, oh, that person's a good person. They leave that place there and they're talking, they're telling their friends about, oh, I ran into this person. Man, he's just a good dude. Three, four years later, they might have some. You might run into this person again, mm -hmm. and that's when the business deal might yeah. happen. You know, and that's how it works. But it's also follow through. It's yeah, like it's, when you sign like that it. contract. When it's yeah. when you sign that contract to play uh, pop Warner football, and yeah. it show up to practice. Yeah. Do do what you're supposed to do. When you make relationships, you have to learn that sometimes you've got to reach out. Yes. Right? It's just hey, it was great to meet you. Hope to see you again in the future. Listen, I've been. That's I've cute. always done small Texas business Apple stuff. Issue. Okay, small, just small business. You know, small business. I had the mm -hmm. body shop. Had the pharmacy, all the small businesses that that you know I dabbled in real estate, contracting, whatever. But they've all been like this. They're they're very small. They're mm -hmm. they have a cap that you know could could give someone a nice middle class living, mm -hmm. but they're capped. And the reason Man the Fuck Up got started completely is because I met this guy who had this huge supplement company. And we did some stuff with him at the pharmacy, and and I kind of asked him, hey, can you give me some pointers? Da, da, da. So we sat down. We had lunch. He invited me to lunch again. We're sitting at lunch, and he's like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm like, oh, Ken, I want to be in your seat. He said, that's easy. All you got to do is sell to the masses. And <laughs> it was till that point that I realized – damn, I made so much effort on all these little companies that I built over the years to make this amount of money. And that same amount of effort puts you in this amount of money. Think big. Think big. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. This was four years ago. Yeah. Five, yeah. five years ago, maybe. And I immediately opened the company and, and you know, I've been grinding at it. We're not, we're, we're a growing company. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know what it takes to, <laughs> you know, I, like you have the supplement company. And it's, it's, people think you flip a switch and it, the, the shit's rolling in. Yeah. It's not like that. That but, only happens for guys like LeBron James. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> well I mean, that happen, if I'm if I own a business, do I want LeBron? James? Hey, one thousand percent. Oh, Tom, one thousand percent. So they, they get it confused sometimes when they're like, oh, the pro professional athletes have the biggest advantage. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> No, they don't. They have more money to, to invest in yeah. stuff, yeah. for sure. But like to sit there and be like the face of some company but, or the thing is going mean, to take you further. The the when it comes to business, I think I've always looked at the money as the easy part. Yeah, it's always been, capital. Yeah, the yeah. money's always been the easy part, and people really get hung up on that. And uh, I've told Kimmy this that that you know I look for people that are more willing than able. You know, you got somebody who comes out of college and they got this degree and they're like, I can do this. Da, 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 da. I'm glad you brought that but up. But they're lazy. That, that made me think about when we were talking about like the stuff that we have at the football and why we invest in a lot of stuff. It was because when we got into the liqueur business, now the, the, the guy do the guy Buzzy do a great job. But he showed us by himself he had over 500 accounts just by himself. And it was like during the pandemic, I was like, wow, does the product taste good? Yes. But we invested more in the person. Because mm -hmm. when we met him, he lit up the room and he wasn't like, he wasn't. Mike Pouncey or Marquise Pouncey, mm -hmm. he was buzzy. And he, the way he <laughs> carried himself and the way he went, I was like, wow, like, this dude's a grinder. And he mm -hmm. proved it to us right then and there. And we didn't sign a deal that day. We just went about it. Me and my brother left, talked about it. You know, we sent it to our mm -hmm. people to look over it, obviously, because mm -hmm. what you do, you don't want to just sit there and make a decision like that on your own. You, know? you want mm -hmm. a bunch of people to look at mm -hmm. it. But what I'm, what I'm saying that is because a lot of times when you're investing, it's not the investment that you're investing in. It's more the people. And that's what makes the business run good. And that's what makes stuff go the way it's supposed to go because shit, yeah. a lot of shit I told this guy straight up bro it, as good as this mango liqueur tasted if you didn't walk in this room the way you walked in here we had mm -hmm. when we had lunch we would never we would have never invested with you because mm -hmm. we had enough money in our in our lives where we didn't need to take a chance mm -hmm. to do something like this it was like man we're good we just sat here the rest of our lives we'll be okay yep but when he walked in that room he sold us on him more than he sold us yeah. on the liqueur and it just made us want to be a part of it and now luckily that we did because Obviously, it's blown up. It's got yeah. really big. So. Yeah. That's but beyond that, it's you can't 
be at everything all the time. Yeah. Like you can't be at tropical distilleries every oh, no single way. day and every no single way. night. So the people that are there representing your brand need to have that energy, right? They need to buy into it. They need to see the vision. They need to be on board. And that's a conversation that we've had. Buzzy, they're going to they're gonna be trusted. Buzzy, <laughs> gonna have, I'm telling you right now, he will not have nobody around him that's not like him. 1,000%. Yeah. He even wears, I mean, he wears the orange hat, the orange shoes. I'm mm -hmm. like, Buzzy, you're going to hear the mascot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> They so just don't put him on the bottle. Yeah, nah. Just don't, nah. Just don't put Buzzy on the bottle, nah. okay? Nah. He ain't that good looking. I know that we have a limited amount of time with you because you do have to go coach your son's football team. Because you got to get in the school line. You know, at American Heritage, if you don't get in school line an hour before, uh. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they go to Heritage? Because those parents uh, there, they don't work. No, they already made it in life. Those parents uh, hanging out, they're just sitting there they're like. Uh, yes, they want to be. Oh. Yeah. No, that's that's a, that's um, that's like a battle. That's like a, that's an ego <laughs> thing. Like, I was the first parent in line today. Like, you it's know. Not, I, my kids go to youth school. They so. go there and park across the street just to walk and go walk. Just so they can be the first parent. Yeah, yeah, come here, and walk over here. And walk. I'm like, why not just sit in the car? Like, <laughs> like you got yeah. it. It's, it's nuts. Oh the, the, the soccer moms at those schools. Because my kids go to youth school. It's big time. Which is our direct competition. With heritage, um, but yeah, it's it's nuts. They get there an hour early. It's like my kids. I'm like, yeah, I'll pick you up after carpool. Just sit out front yeah. until I get yeah, there. I, I used to buy movies on my iPad to travel. Now, I, but now I buy them just to I'm like, I might well knock out a good 45 minutes. Like, why not? You know what I mean? That's wow. funny. But That's... does your kid ever get in the car and be like, Dad, why can't you be here like a few minutes earlier? Oh no, <laughs> my kid. He's like the kid after school. That I'll sit there in the line, and you, sometimes like if he doesn't get in right away, you got to keep going. Like they don't let you. Oh stop. yeah, you don't can't. So now I got to get out the car and go back because he's gonna stay there and talk to all his buddies. Uh, like, yeah, hey, he gets it from his dad. Here, here he gets it from his dad. You. Don't blame him for being like you. <laughs> he shook me off one day, so I see him coming. I'm like, and he like, oh. and I'm like, what? I'm like, you serious right now? You know I ain't gonna make a scene in front of his buddies. So I'm like, get in the car. Like I'm telling, like tell the teacher, and he won't tell the teacher. She won't look at me either because you know right away I wrote, hey Miss Phyllis, and like get him. <laughs> Man, he let me get past him. When he, when, man, when I had to walk back to get him, he, he couldn't. He was like, man, let me just meet him halfway. <laughs> <laughs> he gets down here by my friends. I know he can hear this shit. But it's crazy, man. I love having kids, man, but I don't think I can start over. Yeah? Yeah. You're good? I mean, why? Why, why would I? Well, you have a 14, You said you have a 14-year-old who's going to high school. 14. Right? And then you have a little man who's, what, eight? Eight, yeah. But you're 32! So what? Why would I start over? I'm just saying. He's got two great kids. He does have two. You don't have to, but if you meet somebody, they may want kids. If I meet somebody, she better not want to have kids. <laughs> or she going to be meeting somebody else. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. You can check that one off the <laughs> yeah. list. Oh, well, there you go. Take man. that one off the Damn interview. The fuck up. It ain't happening, honey. You want kids, Kimmy? Uh, what? Do I want kids? Yeah. That's a different thing. She wants podcast. someone else's for an hour. <laughs> I'm a really good aunt. You know, I'm fantastic. Yeah, so I said, pick check that up, one. Check that one. Off. Check I'll that one off the interview. Weekend. I'll take them. They might not come back the same. You, you know like what it? I mean? I they like may big have boats. Do I like big boats? Yeah. Uh, she won't like your boat. That's a. She will not like your boat. Why will she not like your boat? Gator colors. Gator colors. <laughs> colors. And there's a flag. And there's a flag. He likes to fly. <laughs> Too. Everybody loves that flag. No, <laughs> right no, 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 not me, buddy. Hey, not I might me. I not like the person, but I love, I love the way the country is ran. I'm saying right now, no. I don't like a lot of stuff he said. You might have to get a different boat, Mike. No, no, I, 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 no he's like, like, I, I will. Oh, Just the boat itself well, is very, a is a flag. No, I mean, you're gonna have to pay for dinner because gas is more expensive. You know? <laughs> Oh, it takes a lot of gas. Listen, you know I mean? listen. <laughs> when you when you date women who make their own money, they have no problem paying for dinner okay, so if you you're taking care of the gas on the boat. You know what I'm saying? So how do you feel about paying on the first date? How do I feel about paying on the first date? Yeah. I will tell you this. If I pay on the first date, we're probably not going on a second date. For real? Well, no, wait no, a minute. No, no. Who initiates no, 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 no. the date? No, no, no. This That's is why. Too, no. No, this, yeah. this, is, this is why. In my experience, when the date is, when I'm not vibing the person, mm -hmm. I will pick up the check like on the low, yeah. so that there's no expectation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Do you understand what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, well, the, zero expectation. You know and, right away. No, yeah. and <laughs> you're not going to go around and talk about that girl on the radio, use me for dinner, because I, I like nice things. Yeah. So if I go out, I'm going to drink 1942. Oh, like, I'm not oh, going to be a cheap date, and I feel bad. Like, if it's a first date, you shouldn't have to foot the bill for my taste, but I'm also not going to lower my standards so the, the, to the, not impact your wallet. So I'll pay. For, I'll definitely go 50-50 okay, with you. So what, okay, but if so I pick up the whole no check. impact at all on the person's wallet? What if it has? I mean, I would still. Date. I mean, and 
If I asked you out on a date, then I would probably I would go to it. I would because I get it when I, I get it. But if a guy if it has no impact on his on his wallet, if it does the date, if he that's if a great question. Money I would doesn't still... even matter. It's more just you ask me on a date. I you know what? I picked up the tab plenty of times. I have I have. Mm. I would but, offer. I would. I think though. If you were really interested, though, I think that you would flex. I think that you would not let me. Like, even if I offered, I think you'd be like, nice try, but I got it. Oh, the first day, I'm throwing, I'm black hard going to table. 100%. It's, it's going down. 1,000, 1,000%, that's how it's happening. But I'm just saying, like, I would, I think that in that moment, if it was a situation and I offered and I was vibing the person and you didn't and you let me pay, I might yeah, see, be like, ooh. See, that's, where, that's yeah. where it hits me at the hardest. It's like, we're gonna have this conversation before then, before the chat, before even going on a date, because I don't want it to get to that point where, man, it's just like if you're gonna like, well, I pay for it, but I'm gonna feel bad if you don't do it if we don't talk about it before. You know what I'm saying? Like at that moment, you're like, you gonna take out the tab? I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter. But if we but talk ew, about it before, but ew, 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 the, talking about money is so uncomfortable. It's not even for money. you. Yeah. Really? It's not. Yes. Even I hadn't noticed. I, <laughs> but he's being funny. Yeah, got I still no, I still haven't told him what I want to get paid in life. Like, I mean, that's a conversation that Lenny and I have. All the time. What's a lot of money for a guy, for a profession, for a guy to make? What do you mean? In your mind. I think it's, rel that's a very, de you can't ask me that. She doesn't, I don't I'm think she saying, cares about that. I don't, no, 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 no. no, no. That, that, I say it, but it's, it's but Mike, like, I mean, most of my friends are in your sphere. So it's like, I don't, I'm not a fair person to gauge because I have a lot of friends that made a shit ton of money and they're, and I'll tell them you ain't shit. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't really care about your money. Now, I don't want to date somebody that makes less than me though. That's, for multiple that reasons. Was, that's, why I was, that's why I was. Why, yeah. We've had this conversation though, because okay, a it impacts a the character of a man that I date would make it difficult. I don't think a man that I would be attracted to, energy wise, like like how but they would carry artist. themselves. An artist. I mean, who yeah, is the like a starving artist? Like Shinstein? No, because I don't think I'm not. Da I'm not dating a starving artist. Yeah, I, I understand that point of it because I, I I'm you got to have some kind of standards and and I obviously. The money part of it shouldn't really matter because a lot of times, men, uh, the world expects men to, you know, take a woman with less. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They'll be like, you know what? This guy has a lot of money. He shouldn't. He should be with the person that doesn't have a lot of money and take care of this woman because, you know, he she was mm -hmm. with him before he had anything. Mm -hmm. That you know, they get stuck in that kind of stigma. But why is it not okay for a woman in that man's position that's making millions of dollars? No, and take care of a man that's make less. I, I think, think that there are women though that make a lot of money that will date somebody that doesn't make what they make. But I think no, the no, power. I'm, but I'm I think the like power the, dynamic is off in a relationship. Have, no, they a lot do. Of no, 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 I think it is too. They do. But I'm saying but, the world feels more like the man should take care of a woman that has less. One than thousand. A that, see, one thousand. This percent. is why the divorce rate is so high. Mm -hmm. Because it's social media relationships are getting valued on dollars, mm -hmm. not on. How you get um, along with the person? Support, what you yeah, want. what that per you know a person's character. Yeah, but Lenny, part of that is because money can impact the emotional part of a relationship. If you're struggling with money, well, that can negative been an issue with that. It's, there's different angles from that from what yeah. you were saying because money's always been an issue. You could think back to whenever we seen. What I think is that if you think about everybody in your family that's in a relationship and the person that they're with, they either knew that person growing up, they. They met through a friend, or it's always mm -hmm. somebody that's close. It's never somebody that's reached out. Or, I'm from Florida. I'm, I married somebody from California. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's always, or that, if that person was from California, it's because their family moved here and that you met. Do that you like of dating people. completely random people? Like people that you've yeah. never met, that you know nothing about? Yes. That scares me. Why? Because, first of all, well, that's good. Well, so that well, check that one like off that the I interview too. I could look this person up and find anything out. Well, no, yeah, like for, for <laughs> look me, this I think person it's easy. No, but that's it's, how, that seems no. like stalking. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> I can't put your name in no. and be like, "All right, where are you from?" And it don't pop up. It just throws me off right away. It's like, hold on. Well, like, yeah, why do you not exist? Yeah. Is this a real name? Anywhere, like, well, no, like I mean, we've talked about it. Like I have, I mean, I'm on a dating app for content for the show or whatever, and just some of the shit people say is just so random. It's wild. Like it's it's funny. You're on a dating app. Which dating? I am Hinge. Which dating app? Really? Hinge. What yes. is that one? It's hinge. I don't know, but it's like it's just it's it's odd. It's the oddest shit ever. I had you're a not dude. on Tinder. No, yeah. no, no. This white. No. Yeah, you're no, not no, on no. Instagram. Do you need hinge? I know. I am on Instagram, but like I'm not like don't slide in the DMs. But like you know what I mean. Like, but I can swipe you on hinge. No, it's not swiping. You have to. I don't know. I don't want to have this conversation. I've never even had it. I've never honestly. Well, no. Never. Literally, when I got my first, when I got my my 
previous morning show, I literally signed up just for, because so many people are in this space, for the content. And let me tell you something. Some of the ways people holler, like, are worthy of being talked about on the radio. Give us an example. If they're, if they're, Log into if your they're, hand. If they're no. on that app, I, I don't really think, I somebody, think it's really easy. Somebody left me a message and was like, we need to connect before it's too late. And I was like, "Before it's too late for what? <laughs> like, you're frightening. See, I think it's harder to meet somebody on Instagram than it is a dating app because if I signed up for that dating app, I'm there for one reason. It's the date. Like, it's yeah. like to find something. Yeah. For Instagram, you might not know because a person don't post like, you know, they might yeah. not post stuff that attracts your eye. It post maybe their business mm -hmm. stuff or, you know what I'm saying? They might, like you said, don't slide in the DMs, but on the, what, hinge you at the right people? Or yeah, what? yeah, yeah. And then you like go back and forth or whatever. Like, you can have conversations. But like, you have like, you know, you have so prompts. I'm saying whatever in hinge. <laughs> this, you know, like, You're here today. Keyboard warrior. Yes, warrior. You can like, do whatever you want. But the thing is, to well, me, Instagram might send an emoji. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, that ain't working on hinge, is it? No, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't. I just I I find it hard to believe in any of that stuff because the people are fucking lying. Well, that's what I'm. No, but they're that's, all lying. But that is my <laughs> point. Is that I've dated. Dating app. Well, no, and I've. Tell you, you what, what I want to hear. <laughs> what I want to hear. And yeah. I, and, I, and I might take yeah. you on a date. I'm gonna take you to but, dinner. <laughs> I've. But I've dated people that I knew that had double lives. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, so like, oh, yeah, so oh, being yeah. on a being on a dating app, it's like the risk of that is ten times. So it's like, nah, I, I feel better. Like if I can come to Mike and be like, yo, so I think I met somebody that knows you. Like wife, kids, what's the deal there? Like, can you please, like, what am I walking into, right? And not that I'm asking people to rat on other people, but when you're six degrees of separation away, you can usually get to the nitty gritty, like the important shit. Like, are they married? <laughs> like, like, are they lying about being single? Like, you know what I mean? And I've been in those situations. I have literally been dating somebody that had a whole separate life. And you're just like, what the fuck? Did you know? No. Wow. You found no, out though. I, 1,000. Yeah. By a person that was very close to that and who was just over him lying to me. Oh, you mean a hater? Wow. No, it was, was like his, guy? it was no, it was his surrogate mother. It was like his, oh. and she fell in love. Like he never should have introduced me to this woman because she ended up loving me and was like, he's an ass, she's pregnant, they're together, like, and he doesn't know what the fuck to do. And then it was tears. It was a lot. So, like, when you've been in that situation, I'm like, it's strictly for content because oh, yeah. I don't trust none of you crazy bastards. None of y'all. So it sounds like you only got a couple options, and you know you gotta. How many <laughs> yes. friends you got, Kimmy? How many friends How many do I you have? Know, yeah. Well, according to Instagram, yeah, I, I gotta go. Okay. Let me go down the list. Start um, checking people off. Okay. Yeah, I'm going down them followers list. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but dating in this, like we were talking about the Cam Newton situation, and it's oh, yeah. just, I think that you know, you're a what is it, a high value man, Len? You're, a, I think, if you own your own business, you're considered a high value person, right? That's the new word that they're the new buzzword. And then you have women coming into the situation, and it's not about flexing. I don't want to wear the pants. I don't want to be the man in the relationship. But at the same token, I don't have to settle for what I may have had to settle for 10, 15, 20 years ago if you were the person providing the lifestyle that I'm accustomed to for me. Like, and I don't ever want to be in that situation as a woman, just because I don't know what's going to happen. Not necessarily with our relationship, but what happens if tomorrow all of your investments, if we were dating, go belly up, yeah. right? The market crashes, you're broke. Shit, radio's still here. I got a job, you right? a couple more years of Joe. What? <laughs> you need a couple more years of Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's coming, for real. I ain't going to lie to you. But if a woman brings value- Did he really just go there? Really? That's, right. That's what you, you just said did? said the market crashing. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, you know what? Go. What were you gonna say about a woman? What? Yeah, because we're gonna get back to that too, though. Mm -hmm. But the, but if a woman brings her value to a relationship, then all that other stuff's out the window. Out the window. If you bring value, like have something of your own, like you don't have to be make millions. You don't even have to make more money than me. Just have. But I love that you said that because like value to some women is cooking, cleaning, like yes. For somebody that how you said it with high value is that yeah. So somebody with high value, cooking, cleaning, I can hire a chef. I can hire a cleaning lady. I can do all that stuff. So it might save me money to do that, to pay a cleaning lady once a week, to hire a chef to cook me dinner because I can get lunch and breakfast. I'm out the house. To hire a chef to cook me dinner. It's going to be less expensive for me to pay for that stuff than have a female in the house not bringing any value. To, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being honest. Like, if you really, if you really add up what it is a month to get a cleaning lady, what it is a month to get a, uh, somebody to cook a mm -hmm. one meal a day for you, or... Yeah. Somebody to entertain you for a couple nights. Like if you add all that up, it's not. It's less than having a woman in your life. So I'm saying, if you're gonna be in a man's life, bring value because 
it's cheaper than shit. They always say it's cheaper to keep her. Yeah, if you get you sign half your money over to her. <laughs> but it, it, it's honestly, it's cheaper not to be with you if you don't bring any value because mm-hmm. I'm spending way more money and way more thought on you than I should be. And when I could be using my mind on other shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. when you put your mind on stuff and it's locked in on stuff, it's going to bother you more and more over time. Mm-hmm. So say, for instance, like a girl that stays home all the time, doesn't have a job. Mm-hmm. It might not bother you the first four years. But over time, it's going to get to a point mm-hmm. where you're like, damn, I'm consuming so much time, so much energy trying to get this person to get out the house work. I'm missing out on stuff I should really be doing. So in that, in the, in that sense, it is way more expensive to get mm-hmm. rid I, of them. You know, I, I, I get, get that of point a lot. <coughs> but I, I think, you know, kind of where you just went there was like, you know, that person is like getting lethargic. You know, it's like it's you mentioned the honeymoon period before. Mm-hmm. You know, if you found a woman or a man that keeps you stimulated mentally, physically, truthfully, yeah, you know, they might not have to work or do this or do that. But, you know, if you found I, I would bet if you found the woman that that, you know, was interested in the things you were, she's going to be overlooking the bar and overlooking the, the brewery and you know, kind of working with you to make a better whole, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just, I, when I when I think of a woman, I think of a woman that's going to support whatever mm-hmm. you have going on, you know? Yeah. Not just, not just I'm going to stay home and take care of the and, kids, and but I, support I, you. I think of that, too. When I think of a woman, I, I want, in my life, I wanted to make my life easy. Make my life easy. But when I'm sitting here talking about, but what is easy to like a woman for you? and valuing a woman and finding one, I think the starting point is finding somebody that has something going for themselves. Oh, of that course. But that's because, clearly what's attractive to you right now. Well, that's what that's is, be attractive to anybody because I'm sometimes a lot of times where we can sit here and we want to stay at home wife is because man, we this person we don't have kids with. Like there's there's other stuff that keeps them at the house for themselves. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying if I'm sitting here starting from scratch and I'm looking for somebody that's more like me, mm-hmm. it ain't gonna be a stay at home wife because I'm not a stay at home dad. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out all the time. Like I want to be out. I want to. I feel like yeah. You want someone people, who's gonna be a companion to you, does, whatever you do. Does that same kind of stuff that has the same mindset to want to go out and do better for themselves instead of just staying stagnant at the house. Like yeah, do I want a woman that's gonna come home? I'm come home every two that I want to <laughs> be with and do stuff with one thousand percent. That's a, that, that's a starting point. If yeah. I'm not attracted to you, it's not even, we're not even going to get yeah. there. So I'm going to pick somebody that I'm attracted to and that's busy like I am. So that's that simple. Well, no, I, I was so excited that Mike was coming in because Mike and I have had this conversation at different points. Which but, conversation? Well, the conversation oh. just about what what he values in a woman or in a relationship. All I want um, to know is who's paying at the first date. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. We had that conversation in, per- in person. Don't say that. Knock it off. Although, I mean, our conversations today were all in yeah, the yeah, DMs because Mike changes his phone number 77 times a year. <laughs> yeah, well, but whatever. Um, no, because the conversation we were having recently about the Cam Newton you know, remarks regarding bad bitches and what is a good woman. And we posted one of the clips and I was talking about the fact that there's somebody out there for everybody. If you're the guy that that's what you, that's what you aspire to is that traditional family dynamic. You want a woman who's gonna wait in the carpool line and be the first one there every single day and come home and she's gonna cook and she's gonna clean. And that is what her life's ambition is then that's for you. Find yourself that woman. And guess what? As a feminist, right? I'm not turning my nose up at her. That's what she chooses. There are women who still value traditional roles, right? And that's fantastic because there's a man out there that wants that. On the flip side of that, you have career-oriented women, right, who as much as as that, you know, I, I love a guy that likes that. Like, you're, pro- I'm probably not the person for you. Right. If you want me to be the one on my hands and knees scrubbing the fucking bathroom, it ain't going to happen no. ever in life, homie. <laughs> I'll get the maid. Like, it's not going to happen, though. I can cook and I will do that. But I also like a man that can cook, too, because cooking together in the kitchen is fun. Right. Like, hey, we it's sexy. So with that being said, you just have to find the person that, to your point, Mike and Lenny, shares those same ideals with you. But we've gotten so caught up in this social media messaging that one is better than the other or one makes you more of a woman than the other and it's not true and one Both of the are acceptable. I'm not saying that one is better than the other or we should hold one value more value yeah than but in my eyes I'm telling you what I would look for mm-hmm. like some you gotta find what makes you happy like somebody yeah somebody wants somebody does want that maybe they like a wife to sit home 24 hours out a day and 
Think about ways to spend their money online. <laughs> 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 or think about what you're doing while you are not home and they are. Uh -huh. But no, this guy on, on, on Instagram, on the Man TF Up Now page, commented in his... I told him anyway. His handle is absolute jackass. The guy you've been going me, back and forth. Trust me, yeah. he lived up to it. He said, women have become the men they want to marry when they should be working on becoming the woman they know the man would want. Since when do men care about a woman having a career? These hoes are riding the cook, well, not the cook, the cock carousel <laughs> until they hit the wall and then wondering why no one wants to pay full, full, full price for something everyone else got for free. <laughs> Dudes are just like, um, yeah, no. They call themselves bad bitches like it's going to be a turn on. Bad bitches, sign me up Pfft, not and I was like okay well your handle said it all so, absolute jackass but I immediately thought of you because when he, <laughs> no no not not because he's an absolute jackass because he said since when do men care about a woman having a career and we had this conversation a few years ago and it's not necessarily about being a fortune 500 CEO but just having something that you're passionate about because I don't know how you can understand your partner's hustle if you don't have anything that you feel that way about, yeah. right? So he had he had me on the first two lines because I do understand the woman. A woman is gonna date somebody that she wants or is attracted to because mm -hmm. say like a guy that makes a lot of money. She's gonna date him because why? She wants to make a lot of money. She's mm -hmm. not gonna date a guy or go after a guy that doesn't because that's what. But she does that make her a gold digger? No, it doesn't make her a gold digger. But that's what attracts her because mm -hmm. the, it ain't about the money that so it's the qualities. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying like why? What makes that guy make a lot of money because? But that's what I'm saying. So when like, you ask me why I wouldn't date somebody necessarily that made less than me, first of all, there's a lifestyle. But secondly, there's a hustle that comes yes, with that. Yeah, and I course. need you. Yeah. I'm competitive. And it's not that you have to make more than me. But Don't be like we need to be in the situation where it's we're pushing each other. Like, let's go out and get this. And we have a lifestyle. And also, if I know what it takes to live the life that I live and I know the things I like to do, I'm not putting the bill for both of us to go on vacation. No. Like I'm, I'm not doing it. I'll pay for myself. <laughs> you gonna pay? For I'll pay for myself. I promise you, you're gonna pay for this first date. <laughs> with who? With you? Yeah, yeah. We, okay. You know, Where you guys going? Oh, we getting the, what? 1942? You said? Yeah. Oh yeah. Where are you going? Towers. I thought you had a tequila. We, Why can't we drink your tequila? It is. It is. It is. It is oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. Now you want? Yeah, I brought all this. We're gonna. We, we can okay. Drink. We're gonna get but it. that, like, but that, that's my logic behind it. But some people would say that I'm a gold digger. Because I don't want to date a broke person. Turn your hand over? No. Can you read it on the palm for real? No, they're not tan. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's old school. That's an old dad I like joke. That. I'm gonna use that's free, right? <laughs> Can I use that? <laughs> it's all yours. Just, right. a, just grab her hand and roll it over and go. Now, nah, sorry. There's a, there's a there's a bromance. No, but I understand it I because listen, it. I understand it because I'm not gonna go after no broke girl. Mm -hmm. like, I'm just not. I don't care how pretty she is. Like, would I go after her for the one night or whatever? Yeah, one thousand percent. But like to be my girl and to grow with, nah, you gotta have something. So, well, that's the thing. It's about so. Growth. So I have a question. Yeah. What's your ideal first date? What's my ideal first date? Yeah. What would, what would, what would, forget about the guy. You're already going out with the guy, so you have some attraction to him. What would be your ideal first date? Just out of curiosity. I don't know. Something that they really? planned. You don't have something? No, yeah. something that oh, they planned. Oh, so you want planned. the man to take charge yes. and just pick don't you ask. up and drag yes. you Where wherever. Where are we going? What are we doing? Let's go. I got go. you. Thank you. I know. Everybody's gonna want to come on the Man TF Up podcast now. They out here getting dates. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what is happening? Here with a whole this date. Is like, what? <laughs> okay. Who knew we were a dating service too? Like, and I'm deleting Hinge right now. <laughs> oh yeah, you are gonna have to. Oh yeah. Okay. I delete that first. All right. Listen, we've had enough of the dating conversation. We're letting you go, but we have to ask, what does Man TF Up mean to you? Like when you see that sign up there, what immediately comes to mind? What is manning the fuck up? It's putting those words to action. That's the first thing that came to my mind. It's like, man, it's, we hear it all the time. Like, man the fuck up. But what does that mean? It means take, take action. Actually do it. Go out there. And it ain't about being the fucking toughest guy in the world or being a, a pussy or whatever you want to call it. It's about going and actually doing, taking the action of doing it. And that's what that phrase means. So I've, I've used it my whole life. I tell my, my eight-year-old son, man up. Like, man up, bro. Like, it ain't that I, he's going to grow and be six foot five mm -hmm. and 30 years old when I'm telling him that. It's a, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. like, man up. Be a man. Go out there, do action, take, be, take accountability for it. Take action. Are you okay with him crying? No. Well, I, I am 
Yeah, because I, I cry, I get emotional with mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Like if it's something sad, like I, I'm gonna tell you a story after this the, this <laughs> Rudy story. Remind me about Rudy. But I don't. What I don't like is when he cries because he didn't do good and he didn't accomplish something as well. Or he cries when he gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Or or he's crying because he thinks that he's hurt. Like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. You, grow, you can grow out of that. Yeah. Now, do I understand like if someone passes away or you're watching mm -hmm. this emotional movie? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like that. Some, I'm yeah. like that a lot of the times. But like to cry for no reason, mm -hmm. man, the fuck up. Yeah, cry for attention, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. Yeah, man, man up. Yeah, because a lot of times with kids, with babies, if we sit there and we and we cheered every time a baby fell down, when they fell down, they wouldn't cry. They cry because they they, they sense us like if they mm -hmm. like, oh oh my god what happened yeah. and they're like and then right also they just, look at you yeah you see their face they look at you first see how you're gonna react and then you see the tears come yeah it's like yeah they be like. <laughs> you fall again. You know? My youngest, you know, we make fun of him. I'm like, that's the, he's, the, he's the third child. Who gives a <laughs> fuck what happens? Get up! No, yeah, he was the one what do you mean you got knocked no, out? No, I don't me. care. Wake the fuck up! <laughs> he wasn't supposed to happen. That's why you're like, nah, you know, it's not that. It's just you know, after your first one, you you know, you're, you learn. You yeah. coddle. It, you yeah, you're bag. like, and I was never that guy. And my kids always told my wife. Dad just said cool when I showed him my bloody nose. I'm like, yeah, well, you did great. Hey, you're out playing. You got a bloody nose. Perfect. Part Go back out and kid. play. Here, here's a napkin. <laughs> you know, there's no coddling. So I don't mind. I don't mind when he cries. Yeah. I just it's it's when he cries for no reason. Yeah. No. But I think that it's important that men learn that expressing emotion oh, yeah. is important. Like if if a friend passes away. Like, those are times when it's okay to let your guard down. And I know we do that a lot, especially just, you know, with young men, with people are, that are in sports. It's like a like the don't be a pussy thing. And it's like, I'm, I'm with you 100% on the falling down. I'm with you on that stuff. But, like, in those emotional situations, yeah. like, I cry more when I'm angry. Lenny has seen me. Lenny has made me cry, but not out of hurt, literally out of absolute frustration because I want to kill him sometimes. Right. But like, but no, I'm more likely to cry in those situations than an actual like. Yeah, just for no reason. That, you know what I'm like, saying? Like, feel sorry for you. Yeah, no, that's that not bothers. my thing. If, like, I, if I'm like, angry, like I'll cry when I'm super angry and, your kids and very see you sad. Cry sometimes, like sometimes, like it was hard for me. Like I had to learn that because my dad, did, he he didn't want to cry in front of me and my brother. Mm -hmm. Like he would hold it in until the very last minute. And so that's how I am. Like I, I, I man, I don't care what it is. To the very, like, I let these, I let them fill up a gallon in there. I'm, 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 like, please dry, please dry. You know what I'm saying? But it is it's good. But see, yeah. Maybe that's why you were sweating so much earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I wanted to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Can we stick to a story here, gentlemen? Please. I mean, I was gonna uh, take the credit right, for that. I, I was yeah, gonna I'm take the credit for that. Have, yeah. Um, you said to remind you about the Rudy story. Okay, yeah. So about that is that. So how I say I get emotional sometimes because mm -hmm. I, you know, a lot of people look at us like tough guys because you mm -hmm. know, the tattoos were big, we play football. But anyway, I was watching the, the Rudy movie one day and I'm sitting there and I'm watching the guys. I don't know why I was all in my feelings about it, but I'm sitting there crying because the guys are like putting the jerseys on the, on the coach's mm -hmm. table. Like, yeah. oh, we're not playing because, you know, yeah. for, for Rudy. So I call, <laughs> I call my brother and I'm like, he can hear me like, like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, what the, what's going on? What happened? I said, bro. Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the guy say, bro, man the fuck up. Call me back. <laughs> Will you stop crying? <laughs> and That's I got the funny. phone. I was like, damn, man, what the fuck? Bro? What am I doing right now? Like, my brother should have never seen that moment. <laughs> I should have had with my son and my daughter. <laughs> but no, but you it called your thing about man the fuck up. Yeah. He said, he's like, bro, man the fuck up. Call me back. Like, what are you doing? Like, you to be like. <laughs> Listen, it's emotional. It, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, that's precious. I like yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And okay, last thing. Is there a time in your life, aside from watching Rudy, yeah. where you where you had just man the fuck up? Like one definitive moment where it was like, okay, like it's a make or break experience for me. Hmm. As far as like uh like a sad moment or something like where I was like you know what I, if I don't make this anything yeah, yeah like um, just a man the fuck up moment. I think more of uh when our dad lost his leg. So our our 2008 our dad had worked for this um this animal feed company for a long long time probably like 20 years. Anyway they would bring these uh these rail cart train train carts um and dump the feed off in the mill and they would you know empty them out. And get them down the uh, end of the tracks so where they pick these uh, mm -hmm. train or whatever back up so they can take them and fill them back up. Anyway, one day my mom used to always call us and be like joking on the phone. She's like, oh, this happened and like faking stuff, crying wolf. And mm -hmm. so she calls us this day. Me and my brother walk into class. She's like, man, your dad got in a train accident. I'm like, train accident? Like in my mind, I'm like, there's no way. Like, 
how the hell could he get in a train accident? Like, there, there ain't even no trains in Lakeland. Like, then I went to think. She's like, no. She called back. She's like, no, your dad lost his leg at work. He got ran over by a train. I'm like, I hung up on my mom again. My brother's like, what, what, what happened? I say, man, mom's fucking around saying that dad lost his leg in a train accident. He's like, man, why the hell is she always doing this shit? So when she called back the third time, I was like, no way, are you, you serious? Man, when my dad laid there, we got there at that hospital, he was in the ICU for three days. Mm. Knocked out. Couldn't, w- wouldn't wake up or anything. So that, in that moment in my life, I was like, you know what? Man, me and my brother, we got, we got man to fuck up. Our dad's never going to be the same. And when he woke up, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Different, like yeah, not as mean. He, I mean, <laughs> change his whole. I swear to God, it's yeah. like crazy yeah. to see. Like happy to be alive. Some, yeah, when someone goes through one of those mm-hmm. like traumatic, traumatic experiences in their lives, man, they wake up a different person because they look at life different. So we would come back the year after that happened, and my sisters were like still living in the house, and they were talking to my dad like we never heard before. Like this was like talking back, and I asked my dad like, Dad, what the hell? Like you beat the shit out of us. That was us. He was like, Well, you know, I learned that you could, you know, raise kids different. I'm like. The hell you mean? Where'd you learn that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a dad, though, did you become a kid again and raise you different? Yeah. Like, no, nah, he's like, man, when I was there in that hospital and I laid there, he said, I just valued everything different. I valued mm-hmm. my kids different. I valued what, what was important in life mm-hmm. different. And me and my brother in that moment was like, bro, we got man to fuck up. We have to make it to the NFL because dad can't provide no more. Mm-hmm. And that, that changed the course of everything. And look at you now. Look at me now. Crazy, right? It's a great story. It's Not crazy. that your dad lost his leg, but yeah. but you wouldn't that, even tell. Like yeah. even my teammates, I played with some guys for like five years. You know what I mean? And they, I mean, they see a story come out like your dad, one leg. I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, because he doesn't carry himself like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like one of those people that be like, I'm not handicapped. Mm-hmm. I'm just not. Mm-hmm. And that mindset he instilled in me and my brother, and that's made us successful. I think that that's a great note to end this podcast on. Yeah. Nice job, sir. So we have Tropical Distilleries opening. May 15th. Okay. You've got Twin Peas Whiskey. Twin Peas Whiskey. Wait, uh, Cinco Cero. What is it? Because it's 305 is the tequila. It's uh, Tres Ciro Cinco. That's what it is. Real okay, five. yep. See, I know a little Spanish. There you go. Throw that was bad. Go. We got to being down in Winwood now. <laughs> Better a little bit. Facts. And then you have your mango liqueur, yeah? So we have the mango liqueur. We have the citrus. And then now we have the espresso. So we have all three of those liqueurs that will be made down there. We'll have classes to teach you how to make the cocktails. It's going to be a big time experience. And I'm glad it's down here. Give us something to do every day. There you go. And then they can follow you on Instagram. Yeah, at Mike Pouncey. Slide in the DMs. Uh, yeah. Please But don't. only if you're a high value female. Oh, yeah. You better have a job. You better. <laughs> you, better. you better have a job. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. If you, I'm going to look you up. You ain't got no job. It's over for you. Mm-hmm. If he can't find a tax return, if he can't find, a, it's over. Don't even try it. I need your high school, everything you went to. I got to do some research. Well, Mr. Pouncey, I appreciate you making the time. I hope you have a fantastic football uh, Thank you. practice and season with your son. Absolutely incredible chopping it up. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and share the Man TF Up podcast. We are absolutely everywhere. There's no excuses. Um, go ahead, Len. I know you want to. Oh, did I want to say something? There you go. Uh-huh. Bitch. If you want to email us, feel free. Kimmy B <laughs> at <laughs> mantfuptv.com. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you, guys.